from the bottom. From the bottom. You know we got them. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Y'all know who it is once again. Coming to y'all live and we all live. We might as well just go live after we finish. Um, It's from the bottom podcast. And my lovely, wonderful co-host. Co-co-host. Co-co-host. Who you be? This is the lovely Mrs. Williams. Hey, hey. <laughs> yes, and uh, Cal couldn't make it. And once again, congratulations <laughs> to Little the Mr. Kingston. and Mrs. Jackson. Uh, welcoming Kingston. Uh, beautiful baby boy, man. Big uh, baby boy. Big baby boy. Nice and healthy, too. Kelsey, he just be chilling. I'm like, man, you got to do one of those moves where you got to poke him to see if he up, huh? Uh, alive. He be like, yeah. <laughs> so, man, you know, congratulate them on uh, the beautiful joy. Uh, the last, the last one. Last of the Mohicans. I met. So, yeah. Uh we gonna kick it off just like this. Uh, I hope everybody holidays went by uh, or was pretty good, as you know from like our last episode. Uh, we hope y'all stomachs were in good hands, because <laughs> I know somebody out there had to run in that bathroom a couple of times. I had to call off, but uh, um, yes, let's kick it off. We are gonna go ahead with Mo, Miss Monique Monic. Uh, her question. <laughs> Uh, we did kind of, uh, we did, uh, something new, um, just putting out there that, you know, we were podcasting ahead of time, you know, before we started and, uh, lots we gathered of topics. up, yeah, lots of topics. So we gather up some things. Oh, y'all, we got a special, special guest today. We got little Kyrie. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Can you say, Hey. Say hi. Oh, so now he won't go silent. Oh, you got oh. your airplane. You got your airplane, Bubba? He just Our special, y'all. special guest today. So y'all, please bear with us. Oh, he's going to be... As he's wide awake yes, today. Yes, he's going to be in and out today. So we may have a couple little pauses. As I can see, he's ready to do what he do. But uh, shout out to... Me. with mommy. Shout out to Kyrie uh, for being as patient as you will be. Uh, we want to give a shout out to Mo, like we said in the beginning. Uh, this is one of her questions. Uh, swearing in front of kids, how much is too much? Are kids swearing too young? Is swearing necessary? What do you think? So this is a good one because our middle son is 10 years old and... We keep getting reports about him, you know, thinking he can use all kind of words. Yeah. Yeah, we just, you know, I, I will admit I'm not the best about holding my tongue in front of them. But, you know, I try, yeah. to, I try to teach them, you know, is you don't you don't say the things that mommy says. You don't do the things that mommy do. Not that I do, you know, crazy stuff in front of them. I do swear in front of them. But, you know, I don't know. But I feel like kids should know better. Like, you know, you got to teach them the right way. So you teach them not to curse even if they hear it. But with with all that being said, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to lie. Um when kids are like sponges no matter what age they are and some un, until un, i want to say until they become their own until they have their own identity they're sponging off of what they constantly see so if they constantly hear us you know cussing or whatnot eventually they always hear that so it's going to be like well i'm not going to say anything that's uh like one of my teachers used to say using colorful words 
And I tell TT that all the time. I say, say, bro, you know when you cuss, you're not using colorful words. As sometimes I might be cussing, and I say, well, excuse me. The reason why I'm using these words are because I may be uh, upset at the moment and frustrated. So this is what comes out. And then I use the example. I say, why do you think you act or you say it when, whenever you say it, it's all out of frustration and anger. And I say, well, you normally don't, you know, wouldn't hear me say that. But sometimes I do slip up and say it. And that's one of the things just as um, just as a parent, I think, where we we have to bite down on it because we may not think that they're paying attention. But kids pay attention to, they pay attention everything. to everything. Lasses they sure think they do. slick. And no, I don't, it's not. No, sir, you can't eat the crayons. Kids, kids are now, being, they are too young with a lot of, uh, doing a lot of swearing or whatnot. So, yeah, um, being at, at, yeah, they shouldn't at all, really. I mean, and I think that goes in hand with uh, showing them and teaching them colorful words. Like being... Being creative when speaking, and I say that because um, sometimes I notice kids when they don't when they don't know how to express themselves, anger is like one of the first things that comes out. So, with that being said, the first thing they know how to uh, the first thing they do is use a word where it's very offensive and it's uh and it's like attacking all because of not you know all because they don't know how to talk with ease and talk you know talk calmly and 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 that goes hand in hand um because like i said you if you talk to them if you constantly talk to them you know in in that manner in a calmly manner and not swear a lot well you know it'll rub off on them because how would they pick it up unless it's from outside because my moms and my dads they ain't do all that cussing my dad would slip out and say some things but if i did cuss it was outside the house it wasn't in the house nowhere and i mean oh, sure I nobody listen in front of my parents i bet Mm-mm. you'll get a whooping huh i used to curse at school you know and i try <clears throat> excuse me i try to tell tt like you know it swearing doesn't make you cool it doesn't make you you know look a certain way towards the kids however he might be trying to you know show off or whatever yeah that's what kids do. you know i try mm-hmm. to tell him like it 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 doesn't make you look cool at all you know you got to use big words and intelligent words like that impresses people not not saying things like you know but the the f- the four letter words, you know. It's Mother, what, fork you. It's Did you just say fork me? Them, you know. Yeah. Use big words. Use seven letter words. That's what I try to tell them. <laughs> I remember this one time. Use big words. I remember this one time. We was all in the kitchen, and I think I think Grandma, JT Grandma, and uh, my, uh, Auntie Terry. I think they were in the kitchen, or we all was in the living room. We were somewhere in the house. And uh, I kid you not, as you say that, uh, we were ribbing, I think. And JT said, you know what? Kiss my ass, spirit kiss. <laughs> and we <laughs> we all looked I at him. Yo, he quick. tried to cover. It was so funny because, yo, it just, that was quick thinking. But as you said it, I was like, yo, that was that was creative. That was clever. You gotta be, you gotta be fast on your toes. Be like, you know what, mother fork, you can you pass me the fork, please? <laughs> See, but I don't even let the boys do that, like, cause you're intending something different. Like, oh yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't, I don't play that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So a thing that we do with the kids is if they use a word, and we feel like they don't know what the word means, we always ask them, what does that mean? What does that word mean? And if they don't know, we'll make them look up the word in the dictionary. Don't say words if you don't know what they mean. We tell them that all the time. If you want to know what the word means, ask or look it up in the dictionary. But um, And we always make them spell it, too. There you go. Be like, oh, you want to use words that you don't even know the meaning. I said, look, it makes you look even it makes you look even more stupid. When you say something to mean one thing, you don't know what it means, and it means another thing. Now, 
instead of you trying to, you know, instead of you being cool or thinking you being cool, people are looking at you even more like, did he really just, wow, whatever. So, you know, and then me, I got, I got one of those sense of humor. Well, I'll probably say something that's crazy like that. People be like, man, what? But, but yeah, um, yeah, I don't, it's not necessary. And, uh, I'm saying, but kids do things that make you, I mean, so, as much, as much as self-control we have as parents, kids do some dumb shit. It makes you, I mean, it makes you want to whoop the shit out the ass. Excuse my language. But they bring you to that level sometimes. You be like, no. And like people, I see a lot of little uh, memes about uh, how black parents be. The, it was It's always the mother. I know back in my day. So before we go anywhere, before we go in this store, you act a <laughs> fool and I'm whooping you on sight. Man, what end up happening? Somebody always getting whooped. I kid you not. Are we either getting whooped because we either doing something, like she say, don't act a fool, we doing something, or we up in there bugging up for everything? And she'll say, don't come, <laughs> don't go in the store, talk about some mama, can I have this or have that. You getting one thing, and that's it, and that's if you get that. <laughs> Be like, well, damn. My dad had a friend. Well, I mean, they're still friends, but when his kids were young, they're like um, my my brother and myself's age. When they were young and they would go to the grocery store or the, the whatever store, before they would even get in the store, he would whoop them both, like on the way into the store. And they'd be like, Daddy, what's that for? He'd be like, I know you're about to go in there and ask me for something and act a fool. So I'm I'm doing it in advance. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing <laughs> you for how you act. <laughs> Why he's so That's silly. That's funny. Oh, that's that's so funny. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, shout out Mo for that question. You heard me. Uh, I appreciate it because I did post this up kind of late, but I appreciate you for coming through, Mo. So uh, we got on to the next. Uh, my guy, uh, Scott. Appreciate you, Scott. He had various uh various topics. Um, holidays. I'm a probably we'll probably wait to uh, closer to Christmas. Uh to put out uh more of a holiday uh episode but um i'll talk about this one because i was kind of doing some reading on it uh vaccines and it it seems kind of like um the more and more people be uh even kids become vaccinated um more and more happens to them because I'm not gonna lie to you and and babe I, I I think I told you this and I was I was mad at myself but when we went to the doctor one day uh the one time and we had to get a uh, peanut his shot mm. I remember how he acted before he got the shot versus a couple of days after and I didn't like that it seems like something kind of did a little turn. Well, your legs hurt after you get No, shots. it's not the leg. I'm just means his whole demeanor in general. Yeah. And when getting all these, because you think about it, they only tell you what the vaccine is for. They don't tell you what's in the vaccines. Well, they do. Like, see, that's the thing. I've always gotten the boys. Uh, so they do combined shots. I don't do the combined shots. I do the single shots. So, yes, he gets more shots, but they use, like, what they use as combinders for the shots is no bueno. So, yes, he's going to get, you know, four shots, two in each leg versus one in each leg or what have you. But but one thing I do not do is get me or any of my kids the flu shot. Never. Don't do it. But I'm (laughs) saying, still, we don't know specifically what is in these vaccines you're right and that's and that right there alone to be honest with you that's what scares me and i say that because you think about it we i'm as a parent you see your child acting one way and you'll go to the doctor and a doctor and has, has to give the child some type of either medication or they have to take a shot and along the lines they end up like like what's wrong with my child like they wasn't acting like that too long ago so be honest with you i think a lot of things are 
I mean, I don't know. And I can see something, some, I can see something happen like that. Because a lot of kids all of a sudden all happen to have ADHD. I don't even know when this was diagnosed or came about. Like, is this something that really happened? Or is it something that the, the children took or vaccines, shots or whatnot, or antibiotics? Uh, you know, like, because like I said, they don't give you specific the specific chemicals or whatnot you know how the, the vaccine yeah they don't give you the ingredients of it because if they did you'd be like well i can go make this and make it better but we don't know like because they say how can you vac you can't vaccinate somebody and which always took me for a loop how can you vaccinate me with the same disease you're trying to get rid of so the the what it is, is you introduce it to the body so your body can create antibodies to fight that off. So if you do come down with it, it's already introduced to your body. It's not a foreign thing at this point. Does that make sense? That makes sense to a point, but at the same time, if I was to catch it, then I would... Uh, I, I don't... I Honestly... I don't kind of get that because like, like how did the disease come about? That's like, that's the thing. How did it come about? All of a sudden there's poli. How? Polio. Polio. But you think about it, they are, we need to vaccinate your kid. Why do kids have to take all of these shots? Because I understand that over the years, there's been more and more exposure. Earth has had more and more exposure of different things. There's been more things founded. But at the same time, how are all these diseases founded? Like, are they from vaccinations? Or, I mean, yeah, everybody like. Everybody has their own theory on that. I mean, it's in. in that, like, you could go on and on and on about that. Because, like I said, you know, some people believe. That things like that are government issued. You know what I mean? Like they well, were put out by the government. And some people believe that they come from animals or, you know, like different, different flus or, yeah. you know, it just everyone has their own beliefs. So it's it's like politics. I swear, like vaccines is like politics and religion. You don't talk about it. Uh, but, but, <laughs> it's like what it's come to. Uh, I say I have to talk about it because I don't, well, I, don't, I know this. I'm just saying, but everyone has a different view on and, it. Is and that's what I true. Mean. With the whole government thing, uh, you think about it. If your child is not quote unquote vaccinated, they can't go to school. Yeah, they have to have special waivers. Ex exactly my points. I'm saying it's like everything that we do is being controlled. Like everything. I mean, I was just thinking about it the other day. Uh, like with the police. Like, it seems it seems now that police police are more drawn to being abusive to you. I mean, they're very aggressive. I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them are very aggressive. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you think about it. That's their job. So you mean to tell me your job is to serve and protect? Okay, so. You pull me over for a ticket. Why am I on the news and I, my moms have to put me in the ground? Because of a ticket. A, sus, a suspicion. Well, well, I took the breathalyzer, sir, and it came back fine. So why am I being detained? You know, it's just things. Or telling a, a person to put their hands up and shooting them. Oh my god, I just seen that video. I had so I had to cut I had to cut it off on. I had to cut it off. I'm like, yo, but the thing is, but when did it come to a point where they show this on T I mean they right. show this like it's nothing. I mean P and that and that's why it's to the point where people are like, yo, I would rather not call the police, no matter what it is. Right. Because you don't know if you're going to either lose your life 
or someone else is going to lose their life or you're going to go to jail because you were speaking your mind. It's like, how can, how can, this is my house where I pay bills and you come because someone called and said, well, there was a disturbance here. Okay. You knocked on the door. Uh, my, my, everything. You know, and I understand some cases because there are cases where that's what's actually happened, you know, happening. Mm -hmm. But these officers are to the point where before you even give them an answer, they already they put your hands draw. up. They yeah. quick. To, why are you so quick to draw? Why are we not shooting people with blanks? Why are we not tasing people? Or why are we literally not tr having these officers uh, psychologically trained? Because I'm saying it's going, it, it comes to a point where you, I'm, you have, you dealing with somebody and you have to talk to that person because people are just losing their lives like that, like that, like that. And yeah, but uh, we're gonna jump into a more of a uh, our type of question, if you know what I mean. Shout out to Scott for them, uh, for that one. Uh, I know that one went everywhere. <laughs> So we're going to smoothen up the mood. Um, legalizing marriage and wanna in New Orleans. Why or why not? Shout out to Kanisha. Slim Slim for that one. I think uh, marijuana should be legal everywhere. Just because like, there's so many bigger other things that police should be dealing with, you know? I know in a lot of places it's decriminalized. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's not on priority list as far as, you know, bad things to worry about. But uh, there's so many benefits to um, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying go out and smoke some pot, everyone. That's not what I'm saying at all. But that's pretty much what you're doing. No, oh, no, cool. not at Take all. I'm too. just saying for different people, for different reasons, there are a lot of benefits to it. And uh, it's not spoken about a lot. I mean, it is more so these days. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I was... I wrote a paper about hemp. I mean, it's not the same thing, but I wrote a paper about hemp in middle school and just, you know, how beneficial the plant itself is yeah. Yeah. for so many different things. And I think we actually touched base on that on a prior podcast. Uh, yep. It I sounds familiar did. now that I say it. I was like, ooh, back, back then. Yeah, there's just a lot of benefits to it. And I think that all 50 states should have have it some sort of legal you know i'm not uh, it's not going to be as open and available to people in some states as it is here or in oregon or colorado or yeah you know one of the the original states but yeah like i said i think it's very beneficial and i think that healing yourself with something natural whatever the reason that you would consume in any form um, I think healing yourself naturally is is way better than putting oh, pharmaceuticals yo. in your body. And that, or... Yo, it's yeah, cause you get addicted. Cause you gotta think about it. A lot of people don't know this. They say, well, you you feel a certain way. You be you become like you know in a another world or something, or you woozy. Okay, first off, there's different types of you know strands. So you have your sativa, and that's you know it's more of a head uh, a head high. So if you into um, if you're constantly on the creative side, like if you're drawing, doing music, um, as far as a mechanic, I mean it's just anything where you have to use your brain, and it's working. I'm saying the sativa will it, it'll help you. You heard me, and uh, and it's not for the bad. It's not like it's gonna make you. And go do a heist but if you are about to you know plan to go do a heist i'm saying sativa will be with the use i'm not encouraging <laughs> that but i'm just saying you know because it it helps brings it helps bring out the creativity versus an indica that's more so of a, a body high so that's you, like you get the munchies and yeah. sit on the couch forever high. and watch <laughs> you either fall asleep or you just sit on the couch and you say the dumbest things like you look at the tv be like bro do you think the TV will ever change our station for us? 
I mean, you know, just to say something. What if the TV had legs? Would would, would you call that mobile TV? <laughs> wow. Uh, ooh, what do you call what do you call a TV with legs? A mobile TV. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but you know, um, like alcohol. Alcohol puts you in a different phase. Some people can function pretty well off it, but a lot of people can't. And when you consume too much of it, that's a wrap. You you go through some things. Like, you drive a car, you gone. But if you extra high, I think that at some point you'll probably be like, the car look like it's running away from me. I, I got to catch it. You know something like that. I don't think you should be smoking and driving either. But... And that's true, but I'm saying it'll be more so like I ain't about to drive because it looked like if I do the moon go, I'm gonna end up on the moon in my house right there. So you know, <laughs> versus alcohol, you'd be like, I'm good because a lot of you know drinking and driving, and right. that's known. That's known. People feel the urge. I can do this. I can do this. When you ain't in face, I mean, you become Hulk. You you go from being Peter Parker. <laughs> You hit, you get that hint in your system. Now you the Hulk, and all of a sudden, rah! And then, wish your boy Fatty has come along, and you ain't nothing. Cut the TV off. But I think legalizing it in New Orleans will probably, uh, it'll probably be beneficial. This fella, good yeah. job, good job. Nope, leave that alone. Can you say hi to everyone? Say hey. Good, Good job. job. Huh? Well, okay, no, I guess no. we can we... you say can you say What's up? <laughs> hey, we got our new co host. The youngest ever to say, be on the mic. Ka. Ka. Ah, hey, Kai himself. He said it. Yo, wait, hold on. Break time, break time, break time, folks. We coming at y'all introducing our new network that we're on, Tribulation Saints Podcast Radio. Wait a minute. Don't forget the No Phony Podcast Network. Also, our other networks that we rock with, I mean, rocking with us, Esquad Affiliates, and also Fat Lowe's Radio all day, every day. And if you want to be on the show and think you got a good conversation piece, Hit us up so we can schedule something at 253-234-7149. And hey, your boys out here making move. We out. We're doper than the stuff we bagging up from the bottom podcast in the kitchen cooking up. Huh? Callin' J at this, we discuss. If you have a question on the story, call and hit us up. Huh? Here it is, 253-234-7149. Call and you can hit that line. Then leave a voicemail of what's on your mind. <laughs> Go ahead and hit that line Then leave a voicemail of what's on your mind Check it Pride of the power when we're speaking They will never understand why I love reaching Across the world until our people who ain't eating Let's agree to join together, lead a world with peace in it If you agree, let's sit down and handle it You bring your plans, we'll bring ours to scrambling Then we can go and start from that From the bottom, keeping love intact huh? We can go and start from that From the bottom, keeping love intact talking machine now he excited he heard himself replay Ooh, my man but i think um legalizing it uh in new orleans would be beneficial for just the city itself but then again i'm saying i man, our city is so crooked i think they just hide all that money just keep that for themselves but then again i think uh, um i think a lot of people will probably be more happy I don't want to even say that, but it may it 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 should honestly it should prosper the city. I mean, cause you think about it, we have all these all these events that happen yearly. 
mm-hmm. on top of just the French quarters, people coming from all over, spending all that money. I'm saying at some point, your city should flourish, not just in the downtown area. Man, New Orleans should be a gorgeous, beautiful city right now, man. But Katrina hit it, and after Katrina, man, it's like they focus everything only downtown. Only downtown. Mm-hmm. So I'm, To the money maker. Yeah. And I, matter of fact, I was talking to Greg about it, and I said, "You know what you should have, bro? You should have some uh, snacking pack, a snacking pack shop. Mm-hmm. You can get your snack on while you getting your reef or packing your bull. You know, you can pack snack. a bull and snacking pack. I'm just saying for you know marijuana heads. But um, yeah, Kanisha, thank you. And you know what? She also got another question, which I like." This one is more so towards um, uh, marriage or um, husband versus wife roles. Past and present times. Are there any differences that the present time has changed the roles? Should the roles be the same? Wife, you stay home. Husband, work. What do you think? I don't think there should be any set rules to any relationship to each their own. You know, I live, you know, live and let live. That's my motto. Yeah. So, I mean, if staying at home for the lady is what works for her and the man's out making the money or, you know, she cooks and cleans and that's all she does. Take care of the kids, whatever, you know, if it works for them. It works. it works for them. Yeah. You know, everybody everybody and every relationship is different. So yeah, um it to each their own. <laughs> and and that's and you know, and that's true. And like I always say, I say I don't think there was a book written on how to live your life. Because I can't say that I'm living my life better than somebody or there ain't no damn rule book, so I'm saying if if what if the woman wants to work and and she be like, as well, baby, you ain't really gotta work. Know. Be like for real, but me that'll drive me crazy. I can't be inside all day, you know. I mean, I just I just can't. I do it from when I'm off because I'm like, yo, it's been a long week. But then, and still, I can't even do it. Then at some point, I'll be like, so you don't stay still on the weekends. <laughs> I stay inside. Maybe on a Sunday. But see, that's what I'm trying to stop. I be if I don't go play ball in the morning. Sometimes it, I'm saying it. it I be want to chill, and the bars be like, "Well, we, we can we play the game?" And I be like, "Well, shoot, go go have a crack at it." I will just chill and rest my ankles. So you know, but um, it's at the end of the day, as long as both parties are happy and content, and you know, yeah, it's all that matters. That's all that as matters. As long as they're happy with yeah. each other, with themselves, yeah. That's really all that matters. And that's true. And with the roles, um, back in the day, I mean, I think at that time, that's when they had a set to, well, I would say probably throughout living existence for, with humans. That's how, you know, it's always been like that. The man went out, you know, which it, you know, should be because, you know, man go out there and he provide. And if the wife, you know, say if it is just them two. Right, if you uh married with no kids, I'm pretty sure that'll drive a woman crazy. But then again, there's some women who just love to just be at home and go shop. How would you feel if? Well, I can't even say. Uh, let's say the woman makes more money than the man. Mm-hmm. They both were, but they both single. You know what I'm saying? But they're married. How do you think? How do you think you would feel? I've, I've, it ain't like about me, man. Feel? I wouldn't feel demasculated or nothing. I'd be like, shit, I ain't mad at it. I'm trying get to get that money. That's what I'm. Yeah. Hey, you know how I'd be? You'd be like, baby, I'm taking off. Baby, look, come here, come here, come here. Let me rub some uh, Vicks rub on your chest. You need to go to work and make it. <laughs> 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 but you know, I'm, just, yeah, I'm saying if she do, she do. I'm and I'm not mad. I would want that because that's what you want. You want a woman that does well for herself, so you know if you if you going down and out, you know she got she got y'all. You know she she got like baby, don't trip. You ain't got to stress about uh, how long you need. You know she like I got you. You know I, I put in that time. You heard me, and and you know just be like, well, she got us. You ain't, you ain't got to worry, which is the good thing. 
because some because there there are uh there are couples that'll be like oh my my man down and will leave him just because he got hurt at work but just a minute ago you was like he's my rock i'll be with him to the end or whatnot then all of a sudden you're back against the wall where you have to do a little bit more and now you like well no i can't do this i'm you know so i wouldn't mind me i ain't even mad <laughs> I tell you one thing, it sure would sound good. You'd be like, "Don't worry about it, baby. I got it. This uh, I got this tail for uh for lunch." I'll be like, "Hey, sir, look, come back. I need you. Look, look. Let me get them two pies we were just talking about. You you want anything else? <laughs> <laughs> so Your tree, right? So, I, do I have you a limit? You got me right. I got a limit, or you know, it's 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 all go. <laughs> so but you know, I ain't even mad because that's you know, I, if I got it, you got it. And in reverse, I would want you, you know, you want someone on the other end saying, just like that, you know, if I got it, you got it. Mm-hmm. So no worry, it, 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 uh, it'll make life a lot easier. Back in the day, I, yeah, you do it too? Where you coming from with all these crayons? What happened to your cartoons? Oh, do you need mommy to cut the TV on? You turned it off? You want me to come and cut the TV on for you? All right. Say yes, please. Can Can't say, say yes, please? please? Hi. Say hi. Ah. <laughs> say please. Oh, I please. got you, Bubba. Good job. Yeah, that little fella there. He, um, he's pretty active. Yeah, he is. He's a smart little fella. Yeah, almost two years old. Being polite. I like when, pe- I like when he'll tell, uh, when... I say, oh, tell them thank you. And he'll say, he'll put his hands to his mouth, look like he blowing a kiss. And they'd be like, oh, mm, I'll blow your kiss back. i like, nah, he said thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did? Oh, when he rub his tummy, like, you hungry? I'm like, no, he's saying please. They'd be like, why he keep tapping his hand together? He's saying more please. He's starting to use his words now more. Yeah, a lot more, which is cool. But I want to still sign to him. Yeah, that's that's pretty a signing. That's that's he pretty likes cool. Signs and says his word. Yeah. Please, but let's get back on this thing right here. Uh, shout out to Slim Slim for that question. You heard me. Uh, well, for both of those questions, which are some pretty um, some pretty decent ones. Um, we got my guy Keith. Shout out to Keith. You heard me. Um. Celebrity debts. I know that might be like a. We're not going back into the depression thing, or, or you know the sad stories, but uh, it's, it's a topic, and uh, I think that's. I think we we can do that. Um, the celebrity debts, it's tragic. I hate it. You know, it coming. You know, like it's just out the blue, and it's like more and more. Uh, Stan Lee, uh, than the other guy. Um, what is his name? Oh, I know somebody got it. Somebody gonna remind me. Uh, somebody about. remind me. He was a director or something. Let me double make sure. Um, it wasn't Spielberg. Not Spielberg. Dan. Not Daniel. Who are you talking? Jeez, man, it was it was somebody in the in the film filming industry. I'll say that. But um, it's 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 bad. You know, I say they're human. Everybody's human. Our time will come at some, you know, at that point when it's about that time. So you know, ain't really much, you know, you can do from there. Mm-hmm. I think, but I think when, well, are you talking about Robin Williams? No, no, Stanley. Just celebrity deaths in general, like um, Kim Porter. Yeah. She forty. She was forty eight. That's young. So young. So young. And you know what I'm when you die, when you seeing people die that young, you like, man, it's with the poo poo food that we got going. Organic really ain't organic. The only thing organic about it is the wrapping and the bland taste. Or we just gonna put less seasoning this time, just icing it up. Like Twinkies. Remember when Twinkies just left? Then they came back. Nasty. 
They came back poo. You can't say back in the day them things used to pop off. I ain't never really liked Twinkies. You ain't never really liked Twinkies? No, they're like sponges. That's the thing. An edible sponge. No, thank you. Oh, she's hating on the Twinks right now. No, I never really liked Twinkies. Man, I was at Walgreens. That was my go-to. What about the Ho-Hos? Nope. Not even the Ho-Hos? So no Lil Debbie snacks. Really? Not really. I like the, um... The, what's the little Nutty Buddy thing? You like the Nutty Buddies? I hated those. I liked those. Them Nutty Buddies tasted like artificial... Ugh, it's just nasty. Yeah, at least it wasn't a sponge. Well, hey, <laughs> that sponge tasted well. But, you know, I don't really too much eat none of that stuff. Nah, you know what? I, at a point, that junk will kill you. It just come back and... You know what I'm saying? One day... Matter of fact, I got a story. My mom's... Uh, Right before she figured out she had high blood pressure. But she used to go get this big tub of cheese balls, right? <laughs> Always. And she'll be like, hey, little Jerry, look. Can you go to Walgreens and go get them uh, them cheese them, the cheese balls for me? The big kind. I'm like, all right, mama, I got you. I'll go get them, right? Man, she'll be eating them and eating. She'll be like, I need to stop. Then she'll be eating them. Next day, roll around, like, Jerry. I don't know why, but my ankle swollen. I'd be like, huh? She'd be like, yeah, they just swelled up on me. So she'd get off from there, go down. Man, them cheese ball rolls around. Like, Jerry, look, all the cheese balls gone. Look, I need some more. Go get me some more. <laughs> go get her some more. Ankle swelling. She went to the doctor and it was like, well, you got high blood pressure. And it was like, what have you been eating? Well, I eat cheese balls. Oh, she looked That'll at that. She looked at that sodium. Oh, she was like, no wonder why my ankles were swollen. I'm like, mama. And guess what she did after that? She kept Ain't eating them. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, mama, you can get the less sodium or whatever. They still high in sodium, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was like, let Jerry don't play with me. <laughs> hey, that was a favorite thing. Whenever, and I tell the boys that too. Whenever, whenever I used to be right, the first thing she said is, let Jerry don't play with me. Because she'll, LeJerry, you need to start drinking water. I'll be like, Mama, but I don't ever see you drinking water. LeJerry, don't play with me. Watch him out. <laughs> Watch him out. <laughs> I'll be like, Mama, but it's the truth. LeJerry, go take out the, you want to wash dishes? All right, can I go outside? No, go wash some dishes. Take out the truck. <laughs> you still oh, don't man. drink water. Well, at least I was true to that. I was true to that commitment. <laughs> that's a, hey, that's a family trait right there. I guess so. That's a family trait because man, she don't, she never drank water. Oh, yo, check it. Now, I like this one. Uh, also, that Slim came up with uh, um, stepping out on fate, um, being in a comfortable position. And jumping or stepping out on fate to something that makes you totally uncomfortable. Now, with that, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Moving up to Washington, I didn't know what to expect because it was out of my realm. Um, And I just said, what? Why not? And when I mean to tell you I took a leap, I took a leap. And I didn't want to tell anybody for the simple fact. Because, um... It's some kind of way they would have tried to persuade me, you know, to stay. Like, Jerry, don't go, you know, because I bought my ticket already. And then, matter of fact, my auntie uh, my auntie and my cousin, they told my moms that I was leaving. And then I went to talk to her, and, and I know she cried. Um, but, you know, as a young man, I, I just had to roll out. Cause, she knew you had to do it. Yeah, she knew I had to do it. And I don't know if it was uh, she felt more so it was because it was with my dad. But she knew that I was okay. Yeah. Even though, you know, she knew like, well, he going to make sure that he's good, you know. And um, she didn't she didn't pester me. She But she uh, every time I came on, I let Jerry see, this is why you need to stay down here. Because I miss having you. I'm like, Mama, but you need to come to Washington. This ain't nothing down here. You come to Washington, you're going to see life at a whole different pace. And, you know, honestly, since I've stepped out on fate like that i mean you know my life changed drastically for the better i mean and it was for the better i mean i found out that i had my own personality 
To whereas people, you know, like me for me versus, you know, oh, he got an overbite. Because people used to judge me all because I had an overbite. That joke used to piss me off. I'm like, uh, this old up and down booty ass little chick going to talk about something. <laughs> I'm like, your booty straight up, girl. You tripping. I'm like, you going to come at me because I got an overbite. You heard me? I'm like, but that's cool. And when I came to Washington, I seen how so many people were different. I mean, for you. Yeah, but at the same time, I've seen how different people were up here. I mean, when I looked at people, I thought that's how they act, what they look. Because in New Orleans, you knew how if people knew how to play basketball. Or you knew if somebody knew how to fight just by looking at them up here. No, indeed. Man, I they had a dude, a soccer player, who played basketball. I didn't know that. I'm like, man, he played soccer. Man, that dude went the whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, oh, shit. What do you think about stepping out on faith? Um, I think really that's the only way you can grow is if you challenge yourself and put yourself in uncomfortable situations, whether it's whether it's um, a good outcome, like a positive outcome, or whether it be a negative outcome. You you grow from that experience because you know you stepped out of your comfort zone. Yeah, and you challenge yourself, you know, and that's all it is—a challenge is to make it better. And I right. tell them, and I tell the boys that when I'm coaching, I'm like, "Look, one kid, uh, shout out to Manuel. Um, he say every time you get on the court, I just play different." I said, "Am I am I scaring you?" He was like, "Well, I know what I can't do." I said, "Well, that's giving you a challenge because I know what you're going to do." So that means you have to think about what you what's your next move if I know your every move. So you have to be more creative. That's challenging the mind to 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 defeat what's blocking them from becoming better. And, and that's all it is, because you're going to always get, man, don't don't do this or don't do that, you know, from from the loved ones, because sometimes that's what stops. That's what stops us from, you know, taking a leap. Because mm-hmm. making a big move Like moving state to state That's a big move That's a That's one right. uncomfortable feeling Because you're not comfortable So I When I Right when I turned 18 I moved across country Same thing I didn't tell my mom Until after I bought my ticket <laughs> Like I was so scared to tell her You know That's one thing But she's like You know you're 18 I can't tell you not to go And she's like You know you. It's a good growing experience So I learned so much About myself and about people. Yeah. You know, when you don't have the comfort of your family, I literally had no one. When I moved, I knew the person that I moved with. And that was it. Literally, that was it. So, you know, and I was 18. Like, I, yeah, I learned a lot about myself and a lot about people. And I had a friend. I still have a friend, rather. <laughs> She's 22, 23. 23. And when she turned 18, she's like, I think I'm going to move to Arizona with my cousin. And I was like, I think you should do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think that everyone should step out of their comfort zone. Like I said, I told her, I told her, you're going to learn a lot about yourself and a lot about people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, regardless if you stay or if you come home, like you're going to learn a ton. And I actually text her just a couple of days ago and I was like, so when you coming back? (laughs) <laughs> and she'll be back like at the end of the year or the beginning of the year rather so i'm excited and i'm excited to learn all of her life lessons that she's learned along the way and <laughs> yeah yeah oh, you're It'll gonna hear fun. about it oh i know yeah stepping out that comfort zone uh it's the best thing you can do you know it, it uh when you don't have it, when you don't have other people um, I want to say putting, uh, sh- giving their perspective to be yours. When you don't have people doing that, then that means you have to analyze things on your own because a, a lot of times, and a lot of people can agree, there's, you know, close ones who, who put, when you tell them, when you go to them with, a with, a, a uncomfortable, scenario about how i'm changing or how i'm trying to go forward and make a a better life for myself they would kind of deter you with just saying well 
uh, why you doing that? So why would you, you know, you leaving us or you selling out? Be like, well, it's not me selling out. It's just I'm tired of the conditions in which I'm in at this moment and I'm not going anywhere. You know, who wants to constantly just smoke, 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 or just drink, 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 drink? That's going to lead to what? I mean, I have to get a job at some point. I ain't in school. Like, what is it that I need to do? So leaving and going, you know, and having a perspective on life and people, how you see, you know, them in situations, that's the best thing to have. Because when it is like, a couple with a child when it is just them then they can go and see how people act you know they can see from themselves and they can see like you know what i never thought that i like this like me i never thought i like country music until i left new orleans i wasn't around people who like country music i came up here i associated myself with people who like country and and i i knew from there not to judge a person you know about what they listen to you know about being different than i am so yeah that can you say car oh i know you want to say it don't lick me you but silly you know that's that's just the um jumping out on no fate slim i say that's the biggest thing to do because you'll thank yourself at the end for the simple fact you don't want to regret and i know everybody have some things that they did that they may regret because they're like well i would have made it easy on myself if i'd done that so so yeah, I'll say jump out on face so you don't live your life saying I wish. Cuz you, you when you say you wish, that means you should have done. So, don't trip. Mm-hmm. What you, what you say? Mhm. Yeah. yeah. You don't ever want to be like, well see me, I don't regret nothing because everything I've been through has brought me to where I'm at. Has has been a lesson. I just was talking to a, a friend that I've known like practically my whole life the other night. And he, he broke up with his longtime girlfriend like a year ago and he's so torn up about it. And like, he hasn't moved on yet. And I told him, I said, the reason you haven't moved on is because you haven't learned your lesson. I said, you need to figure out the lesson that was presented to you in this relationship and you know find some closure within yourself because she's moved on and she moved out of state and has another boyfriend and you know she's living her life and I told him you know like find your lesson in this so you can close this chapter and move on and I feel like that's that's all it is your closure is finding your lesson realizing your lesson that was presented and you know learning from it growing from it and you know changing it's all about change and growth and yeah oh careful papa <laughs> all growth now let me go ahead and get the uh we're gonna wrap it up we're gonna do the quote of the day inspirational no, no, quote of the day i careful. might add uh um, don't do that it's gonna echo let me go ahead and yeah, echo in the, the mic where it be I know I got it here somewhere y'all um this might be a long one okay this is a long one so bear with me airplane people are often unreasonable irrational and self-centered forgive them anyway if you are kind people may accuse you of selfish Arterium, uh, arterium motives, be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Preach it. And 
that's what it is you know be that person like like we were just saying stepping out of your comfort zone you have to find out who you are because every i mean you can be the you can you can be the nicest person on earth most loving person and people will literally still hate you for being that loving and that kind be like look at this look at this fool why the hell he always happy every time i look up he just smiling you just see number teats Look at him. What he's so happy for? What's going on at his house? Oh, some ain't be right. He faking. You know, and that's how things happen. He just faking. He just a faker. You know how people be like, they just smiling all in your face. And see, that's how people lost. So I'll say, go ahead, y'all. Y'all be y'all. You heard me? Um, and don't trip. Don't trip. Just do what you do. Live life to the fullest. Be creative. And yeah, what about you, baby? Got anything to say? I just want to say thanks for having me again. This this episode's kind of all over the place. And, you know, it's been kind of difficult with Ree. But we appreciate his guest appearance. He's showing yeah. us a watch right now and saying clock over and over. Clock! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's always live. And I appreciate y'all having me. And shout out to Cal and the baby and his wife. For blessing him with that beautiful baby. Oh, dang. And, um, yeah, I appreciate it. So, with that being said, Cal and Jake, a day. Ka! Ka! You know we gavels.